Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Axis 2013. This video is a follow-up video to the third record set video in which at the very end we discovered that there was a little bug uh, when we tried to change the name and save it for our last record in our record set. And that essentially just fills in our list box with the one and only name. Now some of you may have also noticed that there's another issue. Let's say now that I've done that, I tried to change it back again, and I click on save, we'll get no current record, okay? So there's actually two problems here. One of them we encountered during the video, and some of you may have noticed this error where we get no current record. Let me go ahead and end that for right now, and I'm going to hop back here. And we're going to actually go through troubleshooting and diagnosing this issue for those of you who didn't already, uh, you know, who didn't follow up on the homework <laughs> that I essentially assigned you to try to figure out on your own how to solve this thing. Uh, hopefully, I can take you through some of my uh, some of my troubleshooting steps and how we can solve it and see what type of logical errors we've got going on here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we know that the error happens when we click on the save button. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the save button and go to the on click event, and I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here. And we're going to follow along step by step and see what's happening. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our last record here, change it to Debbie, and we're going to go ahead and click on the save button. And the first thing that happens is again, we're looking at the last record in our record set. It's going to check the ID value, see that it's blank, so it knows to edit it. It's going to go ahead and update. Then it's going to drop down to the refresh employee list box, where it's going to go ahead and iterate through the record set. But wait a minute, it just did one time through. Okay, that's why we're only getting on our list box only one. It only goes through this loop one time. It's not going through... Uh, the entire series to get all of those usernames from our record set. So why is that? Okay, well, let's think about this for a second. We're at the final record set in our, or we're at the final record in our record set when we're going and changing the first name, last name, username, and then updating it. So we're already at the last record. Since we're there, then we jump to Refresh Employee List Box, and we're already at the last record in our record set, so we're only one record away from being at the end of the file. And that's why it's going to go through once, see, get the username for the last record in our record set, move to the next, which puts us at the end of the file, and then it's going to exit out of the loop. So that's essentially the problem. We're not... We're not iterating through, when we're doing this loop here, we're not iterating through the entire record set because we're already pointing to the last record in the record set. We need to fix that. So before this loop happens, we need to do something. And that would be to move the cursor, or the pointer, back to the very first record in our record set. And luckily for us, there's a very simple command to do that. It's RS move first. Now... What's going to happen is, when this list box is getting filled up, it's going to move to the first record in the record set, and then iterate through the loop. So let's go ahead and watch this in action. Okay, let's view it. I'm going to go to Debbie Johnson, change it to Dawn. I'm going to hit our breakpoint here. It's going to notice that we don't have a blank value, so it knows to edit. It's going to go ahead and change those. Now remember, we're, we're currently sitting on Don Johnson. That's the record set that we're currently pointing at. And the username is D Johnson. It's going to update it. Now when it hits the refresh employee list box subroutine, our subroutine moves to the first record. And now you'll see when I hover the mouse over it, notice that the username value is S Bishop instead of the D Johnson. So it's moved the cursor, the pointer, to the first record in our record set when we did that jump, or when we did that, that function. So now it's going to do until RSEUF. Our first record is S Bishop, moves to the next one. J Doe is next, then S Kurth is next, then J Lion is next, and finally D Johnson is next. And that's the end of our file, so it's going to exit out. And now we have successfully. filled in our list box. 
with all of the users after we've updated Don Johnson. And just to make doubly sure, I'm just going to go ahead and W. Well, let's go ahead and exit out of here just for a second, reopen it here, and go into D Johnson, change this to Debbie, click Save, and it works. No errors, and we've got a full list uh, on our list box. But again, this is the other error. If I, if I change this to Don and I click on Save, no current record. Well, this is kind of the same problem, but it's coming from the other end. Because now, if you think about it, we've moved to the last record in our record set when we did the first save. It's going to loop through our record set to, see, to get the values for our list box, moves the cursor to the first record in our record set, loops through, and moves all the way to the end of the file in our record set. Now remember, this record set that we're pointing through and we're looping through here in this subroutine is the same exact record set that we were using up here in our save function. Okay, So that means when we've looped through the record set and hit the end of the file, the cursor is no longer pointing at the record, the, D, the D. Johnson record, for us to make any updates to. And therefore, since we're at the end of the file, when we try to issue the edit command, it's not pointing at any record, it's pointing at the end of the file because we looped through all the way to the end of the file down here. Okay, I hope I didn't lose anybody, but it's essentially, it's, it's kind of the reversal of the problem. Now that we've fixed this one that says, you know, update this record, and then, you know, we're dealing with the same record set down here, now it's kind of the same problem. Now that this is done updating, uh, looping through, it's at the end of the file, so when we try to go make another save, it doesn't know what record we're on anymore. Okay, so that's essentially the problem. How do we solve it? Well, there's actually two ways you could go about solving this that immediately come off the top of my head. Really, there are a lot of ways that you could probably solve this problem, but I'm going to show you two. Probably one of the more, uh, the simpler ways, and this is the way that I generally would solve it, is I'm just going to go ahead and store the current record before this uh, refresh employee list box function uh, or subroutine goes on and, and loops through. I'm going to go ahead and save what the current record is that it's pointing at. So I'm going to go ahead and dim a new variable called current ID as integer. And this is going to store the current ID of the employee. So we're going to say current ID is equal to RS ID. Okay, so now I'm going to store in this variable whatever the current record is that we're pointing at, just at least the ID value. And remember, the ID value from is going to be unique to the user. There will never be another ID of the same value. In other words, ID value 1 will always be associated with this record. ID value 2 will be associated with that record, and so on. That was the what we did when we were setting the auto numbering for the employees. Okay, when we set this up, this auto number basically means that every single new record will have a unique ID to it. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, yes, I'm bound to another object, I know. So since this is a unique number that's always going to be assigned, we don't have to worry about having the wrong record when we come through and do our subroutine. Let me go back into here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we've saved our current ID into a variable called current ID. Then we're going to go ahead and iterate through. We're going to loop through our record set. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and move the cursor back to a find first where ID is equal to current ID. Okay, this find first is a function of record sets where you can go and look for a, a certain record based upon a criteria. And that criteria is where ID, okay, which is this value here, if I can open it up here, this ID value here is equal to whatever we set it up as from the current ID variable. Okay, so that's why we're passing this in as the criteria. Okay, so that's probably the simplest way to do it, actually, and that's, it's the most self-contained because everything that this list box thing, 
uh, thing needs to do, it's going to do within itself, and I don't have to worry about anything else outside of it. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm just going to debug and compile. And let me close out and reopen this form. Let's go ahead and move to D. Johnson. Let's change it to Don Johnson. Save. No errors there. Now let's change it to Debbie. Save again. No errors. So I can change this to basically whatever I want, and we're going to be fine. Okay. There is another option, and some of you may have come across this. This is probably the one that is the most common solution that I think um, beginners will probably come to. And that is, rather than storing the ID in a value like this, I'm going to go ahead and delete this all out. And what you can do is you can make a duplicate record set. Okay, so we're going to set... We're going to create another record set, and I'm just going to call it RS2, and we're going to set it, I'm just going to copy this uh, setting here, remember how when we open the form up, we're setting the record set here in our open record set function, I'm just going to go and copy this, and I'm not going to put it on my form load, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down here in my refresh employees list box and make that the first thing that it does okay and let's change this to rs2 and save change this to rs2 that to rs2 that to rs2 and that to rs2 so now what we're doing is we're going to go and reset the record set to equal to what is currently in the query employees query then we're going to move to the first record in the record set two and loop through it in order to get our values okay so it's kind of another way to do it we're just create we're just creating another record set that's basically identical to this one okay we're creating record set two which is identical to record set and then each time that we're going to refresh the list box it's going to go grab the latest values from the query move to the first record, and then loop through them, okay? Without disturbing what's going on up here in our save button and in our back and forward button and our, uh, our refresh data and all this stuff is not going to be affected because we're basically handling the, uh, the filling out of the list box here through a completely separate record set that has nothing to do with any of the other functions. That's certainly a clean way to do it. That's another way that you could certainly do it without having to worry about it. Either way is perfectly acceptable. Uh, the only reason why I'd probably go with the other method above this one is just because this is essentially filling in your memory twice with the same data. Uh, it's certainly acceptable, but it can, especially if you start dealing with much larger amounts of, of data, this can go a little bit slower. And I generally try to work with one single set of data as my record set as much as possible. And sometimes it's just not, not possible. But anyway, there you go. There's two separate ways that you can solve it. Uh, let me just go ahead and debug and compile just so you guys can see that the same solution will work here. And go to Don Johnson, change this to Debbie. Click Save. We're good there. Change this back to Don. Click Save again. And no errors. So no matter what we do here, we are fixed. Everything is working appropriately as it should. All right, there you have it. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down at the bottom of this video, and I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.